Number 10. An Angry Man at McDonald's On April 2nd, 2023, a man was taken in by police officers after he shot and killed a couple in a McDonald's drive through 28-year-old Calvin Jordan Sosa was arrested for the shooting incident which took place at a McDonald's restaurant at 5325 Frontage Road in Lakeland, Florida. The Lakeland Police Department got a call about a physical fight between two adult men at the fast food establishment. While the officers were dispatched to the scene, they received more updates, letting them know that gunshots had been fired. When the police finally got there, they saw a minivan parked in the road directly in front of the restaurant. Inside the car, they found a badly injured 28-year-old woman who had multiple gunshot wounds on her body. Alongside her was a 34-year-old man who was trying to give her first aid. The injured female was quickly taken to a medical facility to treat her serious injuries, while the male refused any help. By that time, Sosa had already escaped the scene in his white vehicle. Eyewitnesses told the authorities that before the shooting happened, the victims were waiting in the drive through line. Sosa, sitting right behind the victims in the line, grew increasingly impatient and started honking his horn while verbally abusing the couple because they were taking too long. That's when both men involved got out of their cars and the physical fight broke out. After they finished, both went back to their vehicles. But as they were about to drive out of the parking lot, Sosa went up to the passenger side of the victim's minivan and fired, shooting multiple rounds. Through witness statements and more evidence, Law enforcement officers identified Sosa's car and traced it back to his home in Highland City. In collaboration with the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the Lakeland Police tried to get into contact with Sosa at his residence. But at first, Sosa refused to listen to authorities and shut himself inside. After negotiation and intervention, Sosa surrendered and was taken into custody without any further issues. Sosa now faces several serious charges, including two counts of attempted murder, shooting inside an occupied vehicle, possession of a firearm as a felon, and more. After his arrest, Sosa was taken to the Polk County Jail, where he is now being held without bond. Number 9. A Fight Over a Parking Spot in May 2023, around 11.30 a.m., an incident at a Costco in Danville led to a man being assaulted over a parking spot. The victim, Craig Blackburn, remembered how things went down, stating that he felt like he was run over by a steamroller. His entire body was sore because of how badly the suspect beat him. He had just finished his shopping trip and was loading his car while eating a Costco hot dog, but then... He met another driver who had been waiting for his parking spot. The man had grown incredibly impatient. While inside their car, they verbally abused Blackburn, mocking his weight, demanding that he hurry up and move out of the spot. Responding calmly, Blackburn told the driver to find another parking space since he was going to be there for a few more minutes. But the situation escalated as the waiting driver refused to move, resulting in other frustrated people honking their horns at him. Eventually, the driver found another parking spot, and Blackburn thought the argument was over. But that wasn't the case at all. Driven by aggression, the driver came back to confront Blackburn face to face just as he was about to leave. Without warning, the unnamed assailant reached into Blackburn's car, snatched his sunglasses out, and threw them to the ground. Caught off guard, Blackburn could barely react before the attacker started throwing punches. After the fight, Blackburn got on-site medical attention before being taken to a hospital by an ambulance. The incident is currently still under investigation, and once it's concluded, the case will be submitted to the district's attorney office for review. But Blackburn's friend, who contacted the town's mayor for more information, received some conflicting details. The mayor's office allegedly confirmed an arrest had been made and charges had been filed. Determined to see the attacker held accountable for the safety of his community, Blackburn encouraged people to speak out. He also requested the local prosecutor's office to get involved. He expressed a collective desire to end similar incidents and prevent suspects like his attacker from avoiding consequences. Blackburn noted that the individual who came after him drove a white Toyota Corolla and had a scuffy grey beard, which could eventually help the authorities in identifying the man and making an arrest. 
Number 8. A Parking Lot Scam Around 8 p.m. on April 11, 2023, a man realized he had been scammed out of $40 for parking, so he shot the person who was pretending to be a parking attendant. 29-year-old Eric Aguirre returned to the burger restaurant where he was scammed and fatally shot the man who tricked him. He was on a date at the time, and shockingly, he returned after the crime to finish his meal. As the events unfolded, Aguirre assured his date that everything was fine after he came back from the parking lot, where he confronted the scammer face to face. As the pair on their date were walking towards a table inside the Rodeo Goat restaurant, Aguirre seemed uncomfortable, so they changed their plans and decided to eat elsewhere. Two days later, Aguirre's date contacted the police because she wanted to do the right thing and give authorities the information she had. She and Aguirre had come under fire after photos of them on their date were released, leading to their eventual identification. Attorney Rick DeToto, representing Aguirre's date, expressed that she fully wanted to cooperate with law enforcement. According to police reports, she and Aguirre had parked their cars near the downtown Houston restaurant when they were suddenly approached by Elliot Nix, who falsely claimed to be a parking attendant. Nix said they needed to pay $20 each for parking, so Aguirre paid him a total of $40. But a restaurant employee later told Aguirre that Nix wasn't associated with the parking lot at all and had actually lied to them. An employee from a nearby smoke shop later came forward as a crucial witness, informing the police that he saw Aguirre rushing back to his car, grabbing a gun and going after Nix. While the employee lost sight of both men, he heard a gunshot around 8 p.m. Shortly after that, he saw Aguirre going back to his vehicle with the gun in his hand before throwing it away. Nix was taken to a hospital but died the same day thanks to his injuries. Aguirre, who lives near Corpus Christi, around 200 miles southwest of Houston, was arrested within the same week and remains in custody as of now. Grant Shiner, a Houston criminal defense attorney who was not involved in the case, explained that Aguirre's legal counsel will likely argue that the use of deadly force was justified under Texas laws concerning property protection. But Shiner noted that Aguirre's situation is complicated since he pulled the weapon out of his car, even though no immediate danger was present. But instead of reporting it, he went ahead with his date for the rest of the night. Aguirre's bond was set at $200,000, and as of now, he's awaiting trial. Number 7. Brutal Attack by a 15-Year-Old On October 6, 2019, a Fall River girl stabbed and killed an older woman, Heavenly Arroyo, now an 18-Year-Old woman pleaded guilty to second-degree murder for the stabbing of Ana Vasquez, a 69-year-old woman, four years after the crime. The incident unfolded as Arroyo went into Vasquez's bedroom and attacked her, stabbing her a total of 70 times. It happened at the house of Arroyo's great-uncle on Johnson Street, who had taken custody of Arroyo by her mother's request, only a week before the crime. Ana was the mother of the great-uncle's girlfriend. On the day of the crime, the great uncle and his girlfriend planned to take Arroyo to New York to visit another relative and handle some legal issues related to the custody arrangement. But the trip was delayed thanks to car troubles. Throughout the day, Arroyo was becoming impatient and in the late afternoon, she grabbed a pair of scissors from the kitchen before going up to the victim's bedroom and conducting the vicious murder. Vasquez was bedridden after suffering a stroke and was practically defenseless against the attack. At the time of her death, the only other person in the house was the victim's grandson, who was playing a video game with his headset on, so he could not hear what was going on. After committing the crime, Arroyo decided to take a shower, got rid of her clothes in a nearby dumpster, and falsely told the victim's grandson his grandmother wasn't feeling well. Suspicions arose when the grandson checked on his grandma, and called 911 immediately. Police got there shortly after, and at first, Arroyo told them that she was outside with the dog and saw a masked man fleeing the scene, but she later admitted to the murder while in police custody. Assistant District Attorneys Collins and Flynn were the prosecutors for the case. This was a tragic event for all parties involved. 
Arroyo was only 15 years old at the time of the murder and had many mental health issues. She posed a grave danger to the community around her. After her guilty plea, the girl was sentenced by Judge René Dupuy to life in prison with the possibility of parole after serving 19 years. Do you think she received a fair sentence? Let us know in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 6. Terrible Road Rage In February 2023, in Abington Township, Montgomery County, a man was arrested after a road rage incident. It happened around 8.20 a.m. at an intersection. According to the police, 21-year-old Scott Thomas was driving a white van when he suddenly cut off a Pepsi truck and walked up to the driver in a threatening way. A struggle then ensued during which the truck driver was hit over the head with a firearm. But then, the gun suddenly discharged, grazing the truck driver's hip with a single bullet. After the fight, Thomas fled the scene in his white van, but police quickly found and took him into custody around 10 a.m. the same day. He was arrested without any incident. The truck driver, having sustained minor injuries, was taken to Abington Jefferson Hospital to receive treatment. Eric Degree of the ATF in Philadelphia talked about the impact of the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network, since it not only helped in the arrest of Thomas, but the database has also generated over 722,000 investigative leads for various cases, offering valuable support to law enforcement agencies in fighting violent crime. Thomas currently faces charges of aggravated assault and other related offenses as he awaits trial. Number 5. Misplaced Anger On August 8, 2022, a man who was already facing multiple charges pulled a gun on an innocent driver who was simply explaining to him why the traffic wasn't moving. 45-year-old Santiago Stephen Mesa, a resident of South Jordan, was at the intersection of 300 South and West Temple. The first driver, observing an elderly woman crossing the street, noticed that a car ahead of him had come to a stop in the right-hand turn lane to let her safely pass. Behind him was Mazer, who became impatient and started aggressively honking his horn. Despite the gestures made by the first driver to indicate there was a pedestrian, Mazer cursed at him and just continued to honk. At this point, the first driver tried to approach Mesa and calm the situation down by telling him there was a pedestrian on the road. But as he got closer, Mesa rolled down his window and pointed a gun at the man before warning him to back off. That's when the first driver took pictures of Mesa and his car before contacting the police. When they looked at the photos, law enforcement officers saw Mesa holding a black handgun that had a flashlight. During the investigation, Salt Lake Police determined that the vehicle involved in the incident was registered to Mazer himself. What's more, the first driver found a news story about Mazer's arrest from another case and identified him as the individual who had brandished the firearm. He had already been arrested on November 17, 2022 and was charged in the 3rd District Court with several counts related to human trafficking sexual exploitation of an underaged victim, and even unlawful sexual activity. These charges came from allegations that Mazer had paid a teenage girl for intimacy. He also had a previous conviction from 2008. At that time, he was found guilty of exploiting a prostitute and operating a prostitution ring through the Dollhouse Escort Service. Prosecutors said Mazer was basically a modern-day pimp. The Utah Court of Appeals upheld its conviction back in 2010, resulting in a suspended prison sentence of 1 to 15 years, 60 days in jail and 3 years of probation. In December 2022, he was officially charged with a third-degree felony, disorderly conduct and aggravated assault. Number 4. Bank Robbery Gone Wrong On February 19, 2015, a suspect in a bank robbery was arrested minutes after leaving the crime scene. The incident happened at the SunTrust Bank at 160N Nova Road. A teller at the bank said that a person came into the bank and handed her a note demanding money. 
The suspect, described as having a beard, sunglasses, a hat, and a black sweatshirt, implied that he was armed. But the suspect grew impatient while waiting for a response and fled the scene without taking any money at all. A Volusia County Sheriff's deputy, who was in an unmarked car nearby, saw a man matching the suspect's description rushing out of the bank. The suspect got into a white Ford pickup truck with a law enforcement logo on its sides and back. The deputy alerted authorities through his radio, telling them that he was right behind the suspect. At the same time, the Ormond Beach police were already on their way to the bank because of a silent alarm activation. With the information offered by the deputy, the officers caught the suspect at a nearby intersection after stopping him before a high-speed pursuit broke out. The suspect was removed from the truck and placed under arrest, with police finding a crumpled piece of paper that matched the note from the robbery. A large fold-up knife was also found in his pants pocket. He was later identified as Matthew William Semione, a 26-year-old resident of Daytona Beach, and he confessed to passing the note during a police interview conducted after being read his Miranda rights. Semione explained that he was facing financial difficulties and had a baby on the way. During a search of the man's truck, officers found items matching the suspect's description. To confirm the suspect's identity, a teller from the bank was brought to the scene, and she positively identified Semion as the criminal responsible. It was later revealed that Semion had actually borrowed the truck from his boss. He now faces charges of armed robbery and remains in custody in Volusia County Branch Jail. Number 3. Aggressive Drunk Driving Outside Taco Bell On June 1, 2022, a woman hit another woman with her vehicle outside of a Taco Bell and fled the scene. Tammy Renee Olson, a 59-year-old from the Brooklyn Center, pleaded guilty to criminal vehicular homicide in connection to the death of 84-year-old Joyce Acosta. The hit and run happened near a Taco Bell located at 5532 Brooklyn Boulevard. Acosta passed away a little over a week after being struck by Olsen while she was walking down the street. According to the reports, Olsen was driving a black Audi sedan during the incident. Before the hit, she had gotten into a heated fight with a customer in the Taco Bell drive through lane, confronting them about the long wait for their orders. Shortly after leaving the fast food establishment, Olsen struck Acosta while she was in the crosswalk and she chose to leave the scene instead of stopping to help the victim or report the incident. Later that night, law enforcement found Olsen at her house and took her into custody. During questioning, she admitted to drinking alcohol before the crash. Public records from Minnesota courts revealed that Olsen had previously been convicted of five different instances of driving while intoxicated. What's more, she was driving without a valid license at the time of the incident. Early in September 2022, Olsen entered a guilty plea concerning the serious charges filed against her. During her sentencing, she was ordered to serve 48 months in prison and a minimum requirement of 32 months. Credit for 91 days already spent in custody was also considered. Do you think this was enough considering Olsen's history? Let us know in the comments and subscribe. Number 2. Negligence of the Police On January 3, 2023, two Los Angeles Police Department officers behaved negligently as they fatally shot a man during a confrontation in his L.A. home. According to the victim's family, 35-year-old Leon Sanchez was having a mental breakdown and was unsure of what was happening when the officers came inside his home. After that, he was shot in his living room. The lawsuit filed in Los Angeles County Superior Court names two LAPD officers involved in the shooting, Diego Bracamontes and Christopher Guerrero, as well as the city of Los Angeles as defendants. The LAPD has not yet responded to the allegations that were made in the lawsuit. At the time of the incident, the LAPD social media account claimed that officers were responding to reports of an assault with a deadly weapon. According to the officer's account, 
They found a man later identified as Sanchez who was holding a sharp metal object. The officers repeatedly told Sanchez to drop the item and when he stepped toward them, they fired their weapons out of self-defense. But Sanchez's family does not agree with the story, stating that he was simply holding a piece of a scooter at the time he was shot right before 6 p.m. The family's complaint states that several hours before the shooting, Sanchez had been accused of assaulting someone near his house on South Central Avenue. But by the time the police got there, Sanchez was inside his home. The officers found Sanchez standing on a second-story porch and talked to him for about 10 minutes from the ground below. According to the family, the officers grew impatient and went into the residence through an open back door. Once inside, they found Sanchez in his living room and shot him only five seconds after going through the back door, as stated in the complaint. The lawsuit said that Sanchez was shot without any warnings being issued and the officers only spoke in English, despite knowing that Sanchez spoke Spanish. Emmanuel Sanchez, Leon's brother, was also in the living room and witnessed the entire shooting. After the incident, Sanchez was transported to a local hospital where he passed away. The family is currently trying to seek justice and accountability for the actions of the involved officers and the city of Los Angeles as a whole. Number 1. Impatience at the ATM in May 2023, a disturbing incident was captured on camera as a Florida man pointed a firearm at another person trying to deposit money at an ATM. The Broward County Sheriff's Office provided details of the incident, explaining that the victim was at a drive through ATM when an unfamiliar man pulled up behind him in a black sedan and started honking his horn aggressively. According to the victim's story given to law enforcement, he got out of his own car to get a deposit slip from the back of his vehicle. That's when a verbal exchange broke out between the victim and the driver of the Cadillac. After that, the situation escalated and the driver of the sedan stepped out of his car holding a firearm. The available video footage reveals that the suspect is a bald man with tattoos. He was armed with a semi-automatic handgun. What's more, he is estimated to be in his 40s or 50s, and his tantrums and profanities were heard clearly as he berated the victim before eventually driving away. As of now, the authorities are working to identify the culprit so that they can proceed with a trial and charges. Which of these crimes worry you the most that you might make someone angry? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Bad Badger.